address in the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Any comments by visitors this evening? Well, we get a lot of visitors, no comments, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the last, any comments by visitors? Okay, none being so, move to agenda item number six, which is the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion to, con to approve the consent calendar. Cons Councilor Austin. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. Councilor Austin moves the consent calendar be uh, adopted as presented, seconded by Councilor Pepin. The question before the Council is on the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and the consent calendar is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by Councilors. Any comments by Councilors this evening? None being so. Brings us to agenda item number eight, which is communications. We have no communications this evening. Brings us to agenda item number nine, which is presentations of petitions. We have none to present this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 10, which is the mayor's report. Honorable members of the council, I submit to you the mayor's report for Monday, September 18th, 2023. With little to no recognition or fanfare, a birthday occurred yesterday. There were no banners throughout the nation. There was no cake to enjoy and no one had to feel awkward in the corner singing happy birthday because there was no gathering or parties to be held. Yet the triumph and pure genius that this document represents needs to be noted as it turned 236 years old on September 17th. On September 17th, 1787, the United States Constitution was signed by our fathering fathers. The document still, has a lengthy, still had a lengthy journey ahead as its fierce debates would occur throughout the legislative halls of our young nation as the ratification process was sent to all of the states that had joined the Union. On, July, on June 21st, 1788, the document became the foundational rule book for our government as the ninth state necessary to ratify New Hampshire approved this document. For the following 236 years to today, our nation will continue, as it still does, to grow into its new skin the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution is more than just words on paper. It defines us as a nation. It speaks to the heart and soul of who we are trying to aspire to be as a society. It, for the first time in human history, defines the base of all government power, does not derive from those who govern, but from those who are governed. We the people means more than just we the people. And with each year, our struggles as a still young nation, we become closer to bringing the true meaning of each of those words into fruition. Happy birthday, United States Constitution. It is my hope that with each year of maturity, we the people will continue to gain knowledge of all you truly represent. Justice, peace, order, protection, freedom, hope, and insurance that our nation will continue. For the burden to understand your incredible possibilities in great words written fall upon the citizens who, call, who you called out in your preamble, we the people. It is my hope that with each birthday you strengthen and the, and the protection and freedom you represent continues to spread. For without you, this nation is nothing. Without you, the republic does not exist. Happy 236th birthday, United States Constitution. Continue to grow, and when necessary, be amended. Take pride in the historic fact that you are the only governing document not to be thrown out in its entirety throughout the world. You are as strong and as young as you were on your first birthday in 1787. May the light of freedom you bear continue to shine from sea to shining sea. Summersworth continues on the move with its commitment to cultural diversity on Saturday at the 10th Annual Indonesian Festival. Congratulations to all participants and congratulations to the ICC on your 10th festival anniversary. Summersworth's proud past is now officially acknowledged with, uh, with the unveiling of two state, two state historical markers. One is now proudly marking the former Hilltop School, the site of the first public high school in New Hampshire and the other at Forest Glade Cemetery, which is listed on the National Historical Registry for its unique design representing the rural cemetery movement popularized in the 19th century. Under nomination appointments and elections, under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Sean Collins for appointment as a member of the Conservation Commission with a term to expire in October 2026. 
and Amy Howard for reappointment as the Ward 4 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in October 2028. In accordance with Council Rule 17, the appointment and nominations will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. This respectfully concludes my September 18th, 2013 Mayor's Report. Brings us to the reports of standing committees, and we'll start with the Chair of the Finance Committee, Councillor Willem. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, finance has not met since our last meeting. However, we will be meeting this upcoming Wednesday, uh, 5 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Bring us to the Chair of the Government Operations Committee, Councillor Mishu. No, we haven't met, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Bring us, brings us to the Chair of the Economic Development Committee, Councillor Austin. We have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow afternoon, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to the Chair of the Public Safety Committee, Councillor Pepin. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Public Works and the Environment, Chair Councillor Witham. Similar, we have not met, but we'll, we will be meeting this Wednesday, 3 p.m. Uh, here in Council Chambers. And finally, brings us to the Chair of the Recreation Committee, Councillor Cameron. We have not met, Your Honor. That is called the trifecta, I believe. Brings us to agenda item number 12, which is reports of special committees. Any reports of special committees this evening? Councillor Garding. Just a reminder that the Mayor's Commission on Cultural, Ethnicity, and the Arts is meeting this Wednesday, uh, September 20th at 4.30. Thank you, Councillor. Further reports of special committees. Councillor Austin. School Board met on uh, September 12th here in Council Chambers, and one of the items of discussion was a uh, approval of their uh, request for a supplemental appropriation uh, that's been forwarded, I believe, to uh, the City Manager that the Finance Committee will be considering this week. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further reports of special committees. Any further reports of special committees? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, traffic safety will be meeting this Wednesday at 2. Thank you, Councillor. Further reports of special committees. Any further reports of special committees? Not being so, City Manager. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of Council, I offer the following comments that were included in my written report for this evening's meeting. Jumping down a new business, Resolution 1324 authorizing the manager to enter into a grant agreement with New Hampshire Department of Safety regarding a highway safety enforcement grant. I provided you a memorandum from Chief Macklin highlighting the, the specifics of the highway safety grant. Uh, as noted in his memo, state agencies have been shifting the process to require more formal assistance procedures from various communities, which particularly includes the governing body uh, ratifying acceptance of the grants. I uh, respectfully request the council consider waiving its rules to provide a second reading this evening as well as a vote since the grant period will begin prior to the next council meeting. Under resolution 1424, again authorizing the manager to enter into a contract with JB Contracting of Dover, New Hampshire for the replacement of Willand Pond Trail Bridges. The Finance Committee met on August 30th and voted to recommend a contract with J&B Contracting. I get provided some background information that was provided to me from Public Works Director Babinski, listing two bids that we were able to secure. The exact contract amount that you'd be authorizing is 57520 However, the Finance Committee is recommending uh, we move forward with 60000 in order to include some contingency funding. We're trying to do this with uh, all of our action items, uh, inevitably, more so than not, we end up needing a little bit more money than uh, original contract. Uh, in talking with our finance director, we're recommending utilizing available ARPA funds. We have almost $273,000 not yet allocated to any specific projects from this federal funding. And council will have the option to uh, either, it's held in a separate escrow with, with very little parameters. We can just draw from that, or you could uh, choose to do a supplemental appropriation, as we've done with some, some of the larger projects that came from opera funding, although it's not mandatory. The former police station on Main Street, it's been a long haul, if you will, including cleanup of the facility to get it ready for sale. This past Friday, the city closed on the sale of the building and the adjacent park. After the Realtors Commission, uh, we secured $194,750. That'll go to the general fund as unanticipated revenue. That concludes my report this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nomination appointments and elections. Under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, following and being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. 
Sean Collins for appointment as a member of the Conservation Commission with a term to expire in October 2026. And Amy Howard for reappointment as a Ward 4 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in October 2028. In accordance with Council Rule 17, the appointments and nominations will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. Brings us to agenda item number 14, which is items which have been placed upon the table. We have no items that have placed upon the table. Brings us to agenda item number 15, which is unfinished business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution for a second reading on resolution 1024. Resolution number 1024 to accept Sunningdale Drive, Firefly Circle, Cattail Circle, and Luna Circle as public rights of way. Resolution 1024, having been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on resolution 1024. Councilor Witham. Move first adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of resolution 1024, <coughs> seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion. Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I think I reported out a couple of meetings back on a report from the uh, Public Works and Environment Committee that uh, we discussed it at the committee level. Uh, in this uh, uh, this development has built this, been built to city specifications. Uh, in fact, the developer has gone sort of a, above and beyond, did camera work to scope the lines. There was a minor deficiency that was identified that was repaired. Uh, and if counselors have taken the time to drive through the neighborhood uh, as subdivisions go, this one was particularly well done. So I'm in favor of this uh, resolution. Thank you. Question for the councils on the adoption of resolution 1024. <laughs> Further discussion? Council Messier. Yeah, in reading the resolution, I see there's a bond for $234,000. Is that typical of, because um, the project was bonded, so is this for the roads or? What? City manager. Yes, it's typical for a two-year maintenance bond. Um, we, the planning board did take action at one of its last meetings to reduce it to this level that was acceptable to the developer. Okay. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 1024. Further discussion? None being so, if you're in favor of the adoption of resolution 1024, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 1024 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1124. Resolution number 1124, naming Golden Road and Corso Drive and assigning addresses if required. Resolution 1124 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on resolution 1124. Councilor Austin. I move for resolution 1124 be adopted. Councilor Austin moves at a resolution that resolution 1124 be so far as adopted, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Discussion. Council with him. I'll support this because it has gone through a vetting process with our uh, city uh, 911 committee. Uh, and it was also approved by state E911. Uh, the other thing that caught my attention is that Golden Road, I can't even say it, it almost wants to come out like Golden Rod. So uh, someday that'll happen, I think. So just FYI. Question with the councils on the adoption of resolution 1124. Further discussion? None being so, if you're in favor of the adoption of resolution 1124, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 1124 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1224. Resolution number 1224, naming Birch Hill Lane and assigning addresses if required. Resolution 1224 having been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on resolution 1224. Councillor Pepin. Councillor Pepin moves that resolution 1224 be so far as adopted, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Discussion? None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 1224, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 1224 is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number 16, which is new business. Chair recognizes the clerk for first reading on resolution 1324. 
Resolution number 1324, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Department of Safety regarding a highway safety enforcement grant, September 18th, 2023. Whereas the city of Summersworth has received notification of a New Hampshire Department of Safety Highway Safety Enforcement Grant for the period of October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024 in the amount of $8,200 with a maximum city in-kind match of $2,050. And whereas the, the New Hampshire Highway Safety Enforcement Grant will provide additional funding for the Summersworth Police Department for enforcement patrols. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to accept the terms and conditions of the New Hampshire Highway Safety Enforcement Grant for the period of October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024, and is authorized to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution and take any and all other such actions relative to this grant determined to be in the best interest of the City. Sponsored by Councilors Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Nancy Cameron, Richard Michaud, Matt Girding, Robert Gibson, Don Austin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved city attorney. Resolution 1324 will remain in Councilor Austin. I'd like to make a motion to waive council rules for second reading this evening. Councilor Austin moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a second reading on resolution 1324 this evening, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Question for the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and city council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1324. <laughs> To authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Department of Safety regarding a highway safety enforcement grant. Resolution 1324 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment being offered, the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 1324. Councilor Austin. I'll move for its adoption, please. Councilor Austin moves the adoption of resolution 1324, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Discussion. Councilor Witham. Yeah, question for the city manager. So the, the way these grants work, this money is utilized to pay for an overtime officer. Um, it doesn't, our, our regular scheduled patrol stays intact, and this is an additional officer paid overtime for these saturated or directed patrols. Is that accurate? That is accurate, Councilor. Thank you. Question for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 1324. Further discussion? None being so, if you're in favor of the adoption of Resolution 1324, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 1324 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 1424. Resolution number 1424, to authorize the city manager to contract with J&B con Contracting of Dover, New Hampshire for the replacement of the Willen Pond Trail Bridges, September 18th, 2023. Whereas city staff have identified the need to replace two existing footbridges along the Willen Pond Trail that are in failing conditions. And whereas city staff requested and received quotes to replace and install two new aluminum footbridges from contractors that specialize in footbridges over wetland areas. And whereas the finance committee has reviewed quotes with staff and supports contracting with J&B Contracting of Dover, New Hampshire for the replacement of the Will and Pond Trail bridges in an amount not to exceed $60,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to contract with J&B Co Contracting of Dover, New Hampshire, for the replacement of the Will and Pond Trail Bridges in an amount not to exceed $60,000 and to take any actions relative to this project determined to be in the best interest of the City. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don Austin, Robert Gibson, Matt Girding, approved City Attorney. Resolution 1424 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Brings us to agenda items under other, other A, to set the polling hours for the November 7, 2023 municipal election. Chair will obtain a motion on setting the polling hours. Please state what the hours are that you would like to see. Needs to be second, then it will be open for debate and a vote. Council with them. Yeah, I'd move that the polling hours be set for that election from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Council with them moves that the polling hours be set from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. I'll second that. Seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion. None being <coughs> Councilor Austin. Well, okay, thank you. I'm going to I'm going to raise the standard objection here for us working people that uh, are working by eight o'clock in the morning. That extra hour between seven and eight is especially helpful. So, um, would you entertain an amendment at this point? Well, we'll go by 
to, to amend it, you, you can amend. It would need to be seconded, and then we would vote on the amendment and then back to the preceding, uh, the preceding motion within order. So, yes, an amendment is within order. I'd like to make an amendment to the motion that the polling hours run from 7 to 7. Councillor Austin moves that the polling hours be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Is there a second on the amendment? Second. Seconded on the amendment by Councillor Gibson. Okay, the discussion is now on the amendment from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That is adopted, then we will not proceed to the original motion, um, and then we will vote on the whole thing. If it is not adopted, we will proceed to the original motion. So the discussion is on the amendment. Is the parliamentary situation clear? Garrett, Councillor Gibson. I have to agree with Councillor Austin. <coughs> I think that the 7 o'clock opening is important to people that have to be on the road to work at an early hour and oftentimes can't be back in town in time to make it by the closing hour. So I'm in favor of this amendment. Question for the Council is on the adoption of the amendment from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. to set the polling hours. Councillor Girding. Thank you. Um, also in favor of this, um, I've always found like 7 to 7 is more clear for folks too. It just makes it easier um, to remember the hours um, and more time for folks to be able to vote, which I think is super important. So yes, I'll be supporting as well. Councilor Witham. I won't stand in the way. This is the classic ping pong game we play with this. Uh, I always offer up 8 a.m. because I am not a morning person, so it surprises me anybody does anything at that hour. But, okay. Are you withdrawing your main motion or you're going to keep the main motion? Okay. Question with the council is on the adoption of the amendment from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. for the discussion. Councilor Austin. Thank you. I, just, I do want to acknowledge that I recognize that this is um, a little more difficult for the city clerk and the elections officials at the polling stations because it makes them get there an hour earlier and it's just, you know, it's a lot of work for them. But I think for the purposes of the public at large to allow them the opportunity, all the opportunity possible to cast that ballot, I think it's important to have the 7 o'clock opening. Question for the council is on the adoption of the amendment from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. for setting the polling hours for the November 7, 2023 municipal election. For a discussion, Councilor Gerding. Just a request a roll call vote on this. I was going to do a roll call anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Further discussion. <coughs> None being so. If you are in favor of the adoption of the 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. amendment, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by <coughs> saying no. Chair, recognize the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? I will set my alarm. Yes. <laughs> Girding? Yes. Cameron? No. Messier? Yes. The amendment is adopted. The main motion now is the adoption of setting the polling hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on the November 7, 2000 municipal election. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the hours are set from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Brings us to agenda item number 17, which is closing comments by visitors. Any closing comments by visitors? Please come forward, state your name, your address, the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Any closing comments by visitors this evening? None being so, move us to agenda item number 18, which is closing comments by council members. And we'll start with Ward 1, Councillor Pepin. I have nothing this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Ward 2, Councillor Vincent. Well, Your Honor, I really don't have anything, but I want to bring your attention to this humming noise that this motor is giving us in the City Hall chambers here. It sounds like it's a ventilation system. That's funny. No one else can hear the humming. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, we can hear it. Thanks for playing along with me, guys. <laughs> What are you trying to tell me, Mr. <laughs> Your Honor? I've got this noise in my head. This was your opportunity of payback, and none of you took any. <laughs> Ching! That's all I have. All right, thank you, Counselor. Brings us to Ward 3, Counselor. Counselor Gibson. No comment. Thank you, Counselor. Ward 4, Counselor. Counselor Austin. Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Counselor. Ward 5, Counselor. Counselor Mishu. No comment this evening. Thank you, Counselor. Brings us to at large side, at large, Counselor. Counselor Witham. I have a very long list, but for the next meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Girding. Thank you. I am going to say something. I'm so sorry. But it's for an important thing. Um, went to the uh, housing event last Thursday that was at the CTC Center at the Black Box Theater, as well as Mulligan's Grill, uh, hosted by uh, the city as, as well as SRPC. It was great, really well attended. Uh, tons of phenomenal information. I mean, I learned we need in Summersworth at least 700 something housing units, right? Which was a lot and a surprise to me. Um, and so 
Um, also noted uh, an article in the Fosters recently about the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard where uh, they cited that uh, they're looking to hire 12,000 employees by uh, next year, which is a large number of employees, all while um, Summersworth was rated the third community in the state of New Hampshire that employees at the shipyard live within. And so I just found like those two, uh, the event and the article well-timed because it's, we're learning we need all these housing units plus the shipyards wanting to hire uh, in a community, you know, that we already house a large number of people who work for that um, agency. So I just felt like, oh, all right, we really got to get going on this housing thing because not only are we down that number of units, but now a big employer wants to have even more people living in our community. So um, just food for thought. Uh, excited to get working on some housing stuff. So um, let's hope we can get that moving. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Cameron. I'm going to join the ranks, and I have nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Messier. Uh, just a minor one. Could I get a timeline of the um, signal lights on High Street when the projected end day? and where we stand with that project because at 6 30 in the morning we're still sitting at a red light when no one's like coming out of walmart or whatever so if I, if i could just have an update so when i get the phone calls which i do i can have an answer thank you thank you counselor let it be noted that it took 10 years for this mayor to get a meeting that was under a half hour. Ten years. It did not take the deputy <laughs> mayor that long. Though. The deputy, however, got any time we got this seat. More than often, he had half of the meetings under a half hour. So maybe you guys are saying something about me. Who knows? Councilor Austin moves that the city council stand in adjournment, seconded by Councilor Witham. The question for the council is on adjournment. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the city council stand.